Okay, it is the 15th, so it's 10, 15, 18. All right, so today, what we want to talk about more than anything, we are on page 129. So today, what we're going to do is take two different functions, and I'm going to call them f and g. We're going to add them, subtract them, multiply them, and divide them. So the the symbolism's a little bit weird. We're not used to seeing it like this, but it really says f plus g of x. It's the same thing as just adding them. Same thing. So we're going to take two functions. So the first example they take, so they take a 5x as f of x and a g of x, and they add them. So that's easy. We're just going to add the 5x plus the x plus 2, and we get a 6x plus 2. That's pretty pretty easy. You guys agree with that? Quite easy. Now, on the second one, we're going to subtract it. So again, the symbolism is f minus g. So we take f of x minus g of x. So we take our 5x, and we subtract our x plus 2. We're going to get 4x subtract 2, right? Does that make sense? OK, we've done this stuff before. It's pretty simple. It's just the symbolism. So on the multiplication, f and g together means f times g. So I'm just going to multiply f times g. So they take my f, which is 5x, my x plus 2. We multiply, we get a 5x squared plus a 10x. We just multiply, we just distribute. So far, so good. And finally, on division, they show it as f divided by g. Let's go f divided by g, and so we take my 5x over my x plus 2. If I could simplify it in any way, I would, but I can't reduce or simplify, so that's just my answer, okay? Thumbs up? Okay, now on notes, before we go anywhere, let's make ourselves a little notes. I want you to write this down. Square root of x, same thing as x to the 1 half power, okay? We've seen that, but I want to write that down, okay? Cube root of x is equal to x to the 1 third power, okay? We've looked at these graphs, a square root graph looks like this, okay? That's a y equals the square root of x. And we've looked at a cube root graph as well. Let's scoot it up. And a cube root graph looks like this. That's the parent function. And we've looked at that as well. We've talked about the domain of both of these. The domain of the square root graph. Am I going too fast? I mean, we've done this before, but I don't want to go too fast. The domain has to be all the x values, but what we know about this one is you can't have negatives. You can't have negatives inside of here. So the domain is x has to be greater than or equal to 0. Okay? And the range, since it can't equal any negative values, the range is going to simply be y is greater than or equal to 0 as well. Okay? Now, we've talked about that before, but this is going to help us when we turn the page. On the cube roots, you can have negatives. You can have negatives of cube roots, so you can have the negatives and the positives. So the domain is going to be x equals all real numbers, because it goes both directions forever, but we can have negative values. And the range, it's going to go up forever and down forever. It can have negative values, negative answers, so we're going to say that the range is y is also equal to all real numbers. Okay, now that's going to set us up for when I turn the page, okay? Boys, you're going to pay attention, aren't you? Mm -hmm. Okay, you guys ready for me to turn the page? I'm ready for you to turn the page. Okay. Okay, turn the page. Here we go. So let's take a look. Number one. So what I want to do is do f plus g, and then I'm going to do f minus g, and then I'm going to evaluate it when x equals negative 1,000, okay? So to go f plus g, I'm just going to add them. So I'm going to take my negative 1 half cube roots of x. I'm going to add it to 9 halves times the cube root of x, okay? And when I evaluate it, I'm just going to add them. And I know negative 1 half, they're the same. I can add them. They're the same. I can add them. 
And negative 1 half plus a 9 halves makes a 4 half. So I get a positive 4, I'm sorry, 8 halves. I'm ahead of myself. 8 halves cube roots of x, because I want a negative 1 half plus a 9 halves, which simply makes a 4 times the cube root of x. Mm -hmm. Say that again. That's an 8. It's a bad looking 8. Because if I go negative 1 plus 9, it makes 8. Thanks, Lauren. So that's the answer. But now, what is the domain? Well, a cube root, we know the cube roots, the domain and range of the cube roots, it's going to have to look like one of these, right? Domain and range is a cube root, so it should look like one of these. So that's not too bad. I can say, okay, the domain, the domain is x equals all real numbers. And I know the range is y equals all real numbers, okay? So how does that turn into 4? 8 over 2. Oh, yeah. No, I get it. I knew you would because you're smart. Okay, now, if I have to evaluate negative 1,000, I'm just going to plug negative 1,000 in for x. But I'm going to use my calculator. You don't have to, but it's a lot easier if I use my calculator. So I'm going to find my calculator. Let me grab a calculator. Okay. Let you catch up on grounded calculator. So if I want to evaluate x equals negative 1,000, just let the calculator do it. I mean, really. So quit. I'm going to go 4. I'm going to my math button, right? And there's my cube root button. Oh, let's see if you can see that. There you go. Cube root, enter, of negative 1,000, right? And I get an answer of negative 40, which makes a lot of sense. So I get an answer of negative 40. Okay, now we still have to subtract them, but that's not hard. I've added them. I've done the domain range. I've plugged in negative 1,000. I got negative 40. Okay, so now let's go ahead and subtract them. So if I'm going to subtract these two, all right, I can do that. I'm going to go ahead and just I'm gonna do this in a different color. Let me do this in black. So if I do this one in black, well, that's not black. Well, how about if I do this one in red? I'll go ahead and negative 1 half cube roots of x minus a 9 halves cube roots of x. So I'm just subtracting them, right? And again, they're the same. And because they're the same, they're both cube roots. It's like our sack, right? We can add them, right, Nikolai? We can add them. And I'm going to get negative 10 halves cube root of x, okay? I just added negative 1 half and a negative 9 halves. Gave me negative 10 halves, but a better answer of that would be a negative 5 cube roots of x, okay? Domain and range should be the same, right? It's a cube root, so the domain and range is going to be the same as the other. I mean, it's a cube root, so the domain and range should be the same as what we had on the prior page. So domain and range is easy. I'm going to say domain. It's going to be x equals all real numbers, and range is going to be y equals all real numbers. Thumbs up so far? Does it make a little bit of sense so far? And then the last thing I have to do is evaluate x equals negative 1,000. So I'll plug that in for x, and I'm just going to use my calculator. I'll let the calculator do the work. So on my calculator, I'm going to go negative 5. I go to my math button to find my cube root of negative. 1,000, and an answer of positive 50. Okay, positive 50 it is. How am I doing? So far, so good. Okay, let's drop down to 4. Okay, what makes 4 different is it's a 4th root. And a 4th root is like a square root. If it's an even, so if it's an even, it is. You cannot have negatives. So, with a fourth root, any even root, you can't have negatives. You can't take a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative. Okay, watch, watch, watch. Negative times a negative times a negative times a negative equals a negative. Please say no. Negative times a negative no. times a negative times a negative equals a negative, right? No. It never will be, right? No. So you'll never, you'll always have answers bigger than zero, right? Bigger or equal to. So first of all, four, let's add them. So let's go a four. 5 times the 4th root of x plus 1. And we're going to add our negative 3 times the 4th root of x minus 2. Let's just add those two and see what we get. Okay. 
Well, if they're the same, we can add them, right? So I should get a, net, a positive 2 times the fourth root of x minus 1. All right, domain. Now, this is a little bit tricky, domain. If you get stuck and you can't figure out domain and range, if you really get stuck, look at a picture, okay? So if you get stuck and you're not sure how to do this, try your calculator. I'm just going to show you on my calculator. If I'm a little confused on domain and range, and if I go 2, I'm going to do times, I'm going to make 4th, 4th, root of x and then I'm going to go subtract 1. If I graph this, let's see what it looks like. Okay, looks like that but it's down at negative 1. You just can't tell. I can change my window real quick. I want you to see this. Negative 5 to 5, negative 5 to 5. Let me graph it. So if you ever get stuck on domain and range, draw a picture. Okay, here it is, if you can see it. It does start down at negative 1. I know it has to start at negative 1 because of that. So I know my domain is going to be x is greater than or equal to 0 because you cannot have negatives for the x. Cannot have negatives, so it has to be positive values. The range starts at a height of negative 1 and goes up. y is greater than or equal to negative 1, okay? So, keep in mind, if it's an even root, you can't have negative values. If it's an even root, you cannot take an even root of a negative number, okay? If it's odd, you can, because a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative. I'll say it again, a negative times a negative times a negative is a negative, but a negative times a negative times a negative times a negative will never be negative, okay? Never. Okay, let's jump down to number five, okay? All right, we're going to divide. First, let's multiply, then we'll divide, okay? You guys ready for 5? So, let me start off with a negative x cubed times a 2 times the cube root of x. Okay? I'm going to multiply. They're different, but you can multiply. When you multiply, you add exponents. When you multiply, we are going to add exponents. We've got to add exponents. Add exponents. We have to add exponents. Well, I don't have any exponents here. Let me rewrite this problem then. Negative x cubed times 2 times x to the 1 third power. So when you multiply, you add exponents, but I need to make an exponent. So I made the cube root into a 1 third power, okay? Because I want to add exponents. So when I add these, I'll get, well, when I multiply, I'll get a negative 2x to the 3 and 1 third power, okay? That's correct. Your book doesn't like that answer. That is correct. That's totally correct. Your book does not like that answer. Your book likes this answer. Negative 2x to the 10 thirds. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. 3 times 3 is 9 plus 1 is 10. Remember doing that? Now, if I want to evaluate neg negative 64, I'm just going to take negative 64 and put it in here. But I'm going to use my calculator, okay, with that? Because I really don't want to put that, I don't want to do that by, by hand. So let's check it out. So if I go negative 2, and I'm going to find, I'm going to go parentheses, watch, negative 64 to the power of 10 <coughs> thirds, okay? Do you see it? It's put in my calculator. Enter. It's a big number, isn't it? Is that millions? Negative 2,097,152. All right. And that is the answer. But I'll let the calculator do the answer for me, okay? Okay, now, I want to finish up 5 by dividing these two, okay? Am I going too fast? This will be the last one I do, because you don't have to do all of these. You just need to see one of these, okay? So let's divide. So let's take and divide. 
So cross off 7, I'm not going to do 7. Let's take a negative x cubed and divide it by 2 times the cube root of x. Okay, I'm going to say it again. When we divide, we subtract exponents. When we divide, we subtract exponents. So I need to make this a one-third power. So I'm going to change this to a one-third power. I got a negative x cubed over 2x to the one-third power, okay? So when I divide, I subtract exponents. So then I'm going to get a negative one-half. You okay with the negative one? You okay with what you see my one-half? X to the 2 and two-thirds power. Okay, Ben comes over to my house. I've got three pies sitting there. Ben eats a third of a pie. What's left? Two and two-thirds, right? Yeah. Now, the book does not like that answer. That answer is fine. It's correct. The book does not like that answer. They like this answer better. Negative one-half x to the eight-thirds. Three times two is six plus two is eight. Three times two is six. Now, let's evaluate negative 64. So if I plug negative 64 right into there, use your calculator, okay? Use your calculator, and I'll show you how to do it. I'm going to go, all right, how about negative 0.5? Same thing, huh? Negative 0.5, there's my one half. Oh, turn this sideways. Parentheses, negative 64 to the power of 8 thirds. See it? And I get an answer of negative 32,768. Negative 32,768. Okay, this is a hard assignment. I want you to work on it. Okay, boys, I want you to actually do it.